and it felt like I was just alone at times. And even though I had my husband, I still felt alone because I just am that way. I just don't never necessarily feel connected to people all the time. And it made my faith stronger because I only had God left and I would just cry and listen to worship music and pray like, God, please, like, I don't know what the hell is going on, but can you please help me figure this out? Because it was like, everything was just getting stripped away. Danny, thank you so much for being here. I've grown up my whole life watching you on my computer screen on YouTube, so now on my For You page on TikTok, <laughs> and now you're here in the flesh on yeah. the couch. So thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. I'm so pumped. I feel like you've had a wild couple of years. We're now at the two year mark of you leaving mm -hmm. the band that you were in with your sister, yeah. Cimarelli. Mm -hmm. Let's start there. How are you feeling now that it's been two years out? Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. At first, it was like the scariest thing ever. And like, I couldn't picture myself doing it and whatever, it was really hard. But now that it's been a couple years, it's just normal. So it's good, like everything's calmed down. People don't talk about it as much and it's not as like dramatic as it used to be. So it's nice. Good, has it impacted your relationship at all with your parents or your siblings? I mean, it's definitely different because I used to work with them, you know? So I used to see them every single day of my life, which like changes things. And most people I think don't see their siblings a lot. Mm -hmm. So it kind of changes like your perspective on relationships. Like you think that your family, you're supposed to see them every single day, which it's not bad, but like, it's also not normal. So it was an adjustment for sure. And like, I moved to another state. So like, <laughs> it's definitely different, but it's not like negative necessarily. It's just different. Good. And I feel like sometimes when you work with family, things yeah. can get tricky. Do you yeah. feel like there's healthy distance now with your sisters? So it's more of an easy relationship. Did it impact, you know, your dynamic with your sisters at all? Yes, because you're right. Like when you work with people, it can make issues. And so now that there's not issues, it's just like I can text and be like, hey, how's it going? Like we have a whole group chat and they send pictures of their kids and everything. So like it's more of just a regular relationship, which I was always craving because I never had that too much. Totally. And so it's nice to have like a normal relationship. Totally. And I remember watching, you know, the announcement of you leaving the group. It took up to a year, right, of you actually oh, leaving. It was a lot more than a year, though. Oh, my gosh. It was gosh. a long time Yeah, coming. tell me more about that. What was it like for you finally making that decision, coming to peace with your decision, and then actually leaving the group? It was a lot because it wasn't like, I don't know, I feel like I would love One Direction. And, like, you hear later that they, like, hate each other and there's right. all these fights and then like, it makes, breaks your little Do you see yourself as, as the Harry Styles of Cimarron? No, I just, like, I get sad because they hate each other. But, like, it wasn't like that or, like, you know, Fifth Harmony, whatever. These people who, like, leave in vain or whatever. It was just, like, from a young age, it was, like, I have fun doing this. But it's not necessarily my passion. Like... As a 10 year old, when you agree to do something, it's like fun. And it's like, yeah, of course I wanna hang out with my sisters. And the five, 10 years that I was doing it, like it was fun, it was great. Yeah. It's just, you start to realize over time, like you committed to a job at a very young age that you didn't necessarily understand. And so you're kind of in it and you feel bad because you enjoy it, but also you kind of want to explore new things, but then your whole family's in it. And so it's just this whole thing. So that's why it took so long. Like I always had this idea, like, I guess when I was like 15 or 16, I started thinking about it because I started thinking about college and what I was going to do for a job and everything. And it was always like when I go to college one day, like when I don't do some rally anymore, like I thought that that would happen when I was 17, you know, because I was assuming that the band would like disperse or my siblings, when they got married, it would stop or something like I thought it would change. But then I got older and it wasn't and it wasn't bad. It wasn't getting worse. It was just like I'm still in this and I don't necessarily think I want to be so. There were so many like thoughts I had to have and conversations I had to have like with different people. And it was like a really long process. Yeah. And so it was like a hard thing to come to terms with because you think about it when you're 15 and you're like, oh, one day, but then you're 18 or 19 and you're like, oh shit, this is actually happening. Right. You know? Right. And I, I think it's interesting hearing about all the hard conversations you had to have throughout that process yeah. because that's so much of what we focus on here at TC. Yeah. Having those difficult, vulnerable, hard conversations is really the way to get through the hardest of things. Like, do you remember what some of those conversations were like with your sisters or just even the outside world? What was that like for you? I mean, they're honestly, I think it, everybody kind of knew that it was kind of going to happen because I talked about it very loosely for a long time. And so there weren't too many like 
I guess the hard conversations were more just like sad. Like I remember it was actually really sweet. My sisters on like the last day, like right before we announced it or something like that, or the last day of filming, we went through, they got me like a gift or something. We went through like all of our memories together and we like listened to music and it was really cute and it was very sad. So it was more of just like a homecoming, like graduation, like, you know what I'm saying? Just like a oh, sad moment, but it wasn't too much of like long conversations about it because we kind of knew it was gonna happen at some point. And things were changing for a long time, you know? Yeah. Well, it's awesome that you had those conversations yeah. because sometimes people avoid them and then feelings bubble up. And yeah. it's awesome that you were able to confront, you know, how you were really feeling because you joined the band when you were nine, right? <laughs> That's a long time ago. Very long time Do you time have ago. vivid memories when you were that young, knowing what you wanted to do when you grew up? Was it music? Because I never thought about music ever. It was like when I was six, I wanted to be a fashion designer and I Love wanted to it. move to New York City and like I had this whole dream. And then when hey, I got older- it still happen. It could. When I got older, then I wanted to be like, um, a doctor and I wanted to do, I had so many different career paths that I like thought about pursuing, um, but none of them were music because like I, my husband, for example, he's a musician. He like lives and breathes music like wow. all day long. He wants to write, he wants to sing, he wants to do whatever. And like, I like it, like I like to sing, but I don't like, it's not like the blood that runs through my veins, which I feel like to be a musician, like that's what it's supposed to be, you know? Yeah. When I was nine, like I was having a lot of fun, and, but I was just thinking like, oh yeah, when I'm older, I'll do this, you know? For sure. It was just always a thought of like, in the very distant future, I'll do something else. Wow. And was there any part of you back then that was hesitant about joining? Do you remember that at all? Not at all. You just jumped right in. No, I was 10. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, this is great. Of course. This is so fun because I remember my sisters were performing at like the state fair when I was like seven, wow. like before I, because they started like two years before me. And I would watch them and I was like, oh, I want to like do it. Like, th that'd be so fun. I want to be with them because like, even though I didn't want to be a musician, I always wanted to be like a star. Like I thought that would be fun, like to be on stage. Like I love Britney Spears. Like I loved like girls who were sassy and colorful and crazy. And so I wanted to be like that. It just wasn't necessarily music, but I wanted to be with my sisters for sure. Wow. And looking back on the formative years in your childhood when you just joined the band, like what do you think that taught you about yourself now? You know, do you, is there any part of you that wants to go back and rewrite that story? Do you regret? Joining the band, do you feel like you missed a part of your childhood? I mean, I don't regret a lot of things because I'm a very, very optimistic person. So like I always think about like what I learned and what changed me and whatever. And I definitely had a different life experience, which made me, I think, more mature than other kids my age. And it made me understand people better. Like I traveled a ton. I got to see the world like I got to speak with a lot of adults from a very young age that most people don't speak to. And I had like business things happening. So I think I definitely matured very quickly, which definitely has pros and cons. Yeah. Um, so I wouldn't say I regret it at all, but I definitely am very aware of the changes that it had on me and maybe the consequences and missing out on a childhood and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, part of me kind of wishes, not wishes, part of me kind of wants to see what it would have been like to have like a normal life but I definitely wouldn't like change it. Okay, awesome. And thinking again back on how you were raised, I know religion has been a big part of your life, right? Yeah. How do you feel like the way you were raised religiously has kind of led you to where you are today? I don't know. It's, it's a really, really big question Yeah. because I was raised really Catholic and my family's very Catholic and it's fine, like it's great. You know, I super appreciate it. I super respect it. And I didn't even really question it or leave it until like two years ago. So my entire life, it was like every single Sunday, you're in church, go to Sunday school. I was baptized, confirmed, like first communion, all that all stuff. All the things. And I always expected I would get married in the Catholic church and like I would marry a Catholic guy and I would have Catholic children because it's very like, um, I don't want to say recessive. What's yeah, the word? Generational. Like, yeah, yeah, generational. It's like you keep it forever. Right. So I definitely never expected that I would question it or anything. Um, but when I started to, it was at the same time as when I was leaving the band. And so I was getting married. I was, you know, leaving the church. I was leaving the band. So it was like all this crazy stuff. Yeah. So a lot of people were concerned about me and that I was changing and all this bad stuff was happening. But really it just felt like I was finally becoming myself. Like I was learning about myself and I was learning about my own beliefs because when you grow up in your super Catholic family and then you leave your super Catholic family and you're the only one, then 
I don't know, it's just weird. Yeah. It's different. And it leads you to question a lot of things, right? Like to what extent is what you believe today, what you were exactly. told or spoon fed growing up, you know, yeah. in comparison to what you actually believe. Exactly. And so you never have a chance to like leave it. Right. Like if you were went to the same school your entire life and then you finally left that school and you're like, wait, now I'm thinking about it. Maybe I don't agree with the stuff that I was in the school, you know? And so, what was that like questioning your relationship with Catholicism and God? Like, do you still feel like you have a relationship with God? What has that been like for you? It was hard because again, it's what you think your entire life. Yeah. And I think when you're, I don't know about other religions or Christianity or anything, but with Catholicism specifically, it's like Catholicism is the, the true, like the, one, the only way. That's kind of how you're raised to believe, which is again, fine. But when you start to question it, and you're like, wait, so like, if I don't believe in Catholicism, do I not believe in anything? Like, if, I, am I, if I'm not Catholic, that means I'm not a real Christian. Like, that means I don't really believe in God. At least that's how I thought. And so it was a really, really, really big thing to like circle around a bunch of times. Like, yeah. okay, this and this and this and this and this and this. And I had to like go through the Bible and go through Christianity and go through all my beliefs. And I had to watch like anti-Catholic videos and very pro-Catholic videos on like YouTube and read, listen to podcasts and like just a lot of different perspectives, which was great. Like, I really think that it made me more educated on things. And now I just kind of see myself as a very progressive Christian. So like, I believe in God, but I don't necessarily agree with, you know, a lot of things in the Bible. And like, it's really hard to talk about because like ex-evangelicals and progressive Christians like on the internet just get totally trashed because like, Christians are like, well, you're not a real Christian if you don't believe every single thing in the Bible. And it's like, okay, like if you think that it's fine. Like, I don't care what you believe. I just don't agree with these things. So you have to kind of have this like very loose belief on things um, whilst I just still believe in God. And I was even talking to my husband about it the other day. I was like, I still believe in God. I just don't know about all the other stuff. <laughs> and that's okay. Yeah. You know, like you're probably still going in circles. I totally too. am. And what is life without questioning things? Yeah. So that's amazing. Do you feel like that evolution of your beliefs has also changed your beliefs on other important issues in your life? I mean, yeah, like everything, Yeah, you know, because I just, you have a certain set of beliefs growing up and then you change right. it and then the whole, your whole worldview changes. Well, let's dive into your relationship because I know that's also something that has been widely commented on yeah. throughout, you know, the past couple of years, yeah. getting married, congratulations. Thank you. But what was that like for you partaking in a relationship with your now husband where everyone and their parents had an opinion about it? I just made a video about this yesterday. I just posted Can't it yesterday. Can't wait to watch. Thanks. Um, it was very hard and very confusing because I never had a very public personal life because I didn't have much of a personal life. Like I had friends, but like I didn't have very any really long-term relationships necessarily. Like I was still really young, like in the band and everything. So I never had an issue of like, oh, people are talking about my personal life unless it was like my relationship with my sisters or something, which I don't care about. So like when I heard people talking about that, then it was like, wait, like I've never experienced this before. Like I don't, people are so intense about it. And like, I think someone talking about you and your sisters is kind of silly, but someone talking about you and your relationship is like really weird and really intense. And it's like, hold on. I didn't know that you had these thoughts about this thing that you don't even like know about or understand. So it was just really hard to get used to. And I had to just, I remember for the first time, when we posted YouTube videos together, I just like didn't read the comments for a long time. Like for the first couple of videos, I just stopped reading it. Um, Cause I learned a very, very long time ago that like if people are talking like, and you don't want to hear it, just don't look at it and you'll be fine. Um, and it was fine. And eventually people came around, but at first it was just a lot of thoughts and a lot of opinions that I was not used to. I'm sure. And what was it like behind closed doors? Like, did the two of you ever struggle based on what people were saying? Like, I remember even reading rumors that people thought that he wasn't good for you. You were just ending up with him because of convenience and yeah. you were just paying for his lifestyle. <laughs> like there were so many rumors out there. Did it impact your relationship behind closed doors? Not really. Cause Emin is like the most confident person in literally the entire world. Like almost too confident and so he did not care at all and I didn't care at all so I think that when you have a relationship and you're very confident in it even if people say something you're like I know that's not true so like it doesn't really matter you know so it affected us in the sense that it was hard for me but it wasn't hard for him at all so he was there to like support me um, but he literally didn't care, so it was yeah. fine. And in your whole journey of, you know, reevaluating your belief system, your religious beliefs, did that impact at all your decision to get married young? You know, what was your thought there? I mean, 
Some people think so. A lot of people assumed it was like being a Christian and you're waiting till marriage, so you have to like get married as right. soon as possible, which was not the case at all. Like I was literally like in the process of leaving all the stuff that I was believing before. So it honestly had nothing to do with that. Like we were just like, we should just get married. Cause his parents got married super, super young. And I always wanted to get married young. Like I was never the type of person to like plan my life 20 years in advance. Like I'll get married when I'm 40. Like I was just very, very open and chilling about it. So it was just a lot of thought about like, we know we're gonna be together forever, so we might as well do it. But it didn't really have anything else to do with anything else, you know? Got it. That's it was great. It was actually very separate from most things. It was like I had Good. my, it was like the only constant that I had at that time because everything was changing. But like at the end of the day, I had my relationship to go back to and like my husband to talk to, so it was okay. And I'm so glad you have that. It's so special. And I know, especially right now in this moment, his music career is taking off. You know, his yeah. song is blowing up on TikTok. Crazy. Does any part of you wish you could say to all the haters now, like, look, he's taking off, he's successful, this is real. Like, what would you say to people now who doubted your relationship? I literally talked about this in my video yesterday. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so funny. I was like, guys, everybody said that he was a loser. And like, because people judge musicians. Like, they judge musicians before they're successful. But then when they become successful, they're like, oh, you're so awesome. And it doesn't make any sense. Like, for some reason, they think that they're dumb when they have no money. But then when they have money, they think they're awesome. But they're the same exact person with the same exact amount of talent and capabilities. So I've just been like, I'm not the type of person to like hold grudges really. So people have been like hitting me up or talking to me who like maybe didn't care as much before and I don't care. Like if Emin goes on tour and they want to go to his show, I'll bring them to the show. I literally don't care. I just think it's funny. And I definitely have like, like on Instagram, I was like, you guys can suck it. Like I thought it was kind of funny. There's always a nice little moment in being able to like prove people yeah. wrong. Oh, it feels great. Oh, yeah. It feels great, but I don't, I wouldn't say anything because I don't care. Like I just, it feels good totally. to know that you were right. Amazing, you know? and congrats to him. I mean, the song is amazing. It's crazy, it's insane. Like it's still number one in the viral 50. That's huge. But yeah. that's awesome. And I think it's interesting how you just touched on the topic of success, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times success comes with expectations. And I know probably for a lot of your life, growing up in this band with your sisters, put a lot of pressure and expectations on what success means and what success looks like. Mm -hmm. And I know you've been very vocal about your mental health journey mm -hmm. over the years and adulthood and what it's been like to navigate. I think I even remember reading in one of your, you know, one of your videos or hearing that you said, you know, 2021 came with a lot of twists and turns and you still don't feel settled mm -hmm. in adulthood. What has your mental health journey been like? So much. <laughs> um, I think you're very right about the whole success thing. I, growing up in the music industry, on YouTube, like in a very privileged family, like I'm very used to just like, everything just happens, like life turns out fine. And I don't have to worry too much because even if everything goes to shit, like it'll be fine. But I'm realizing as I get older and older that like, it's not because I don't fall back on my parents. Like some people like their parents pay for a lot of things or whatever, like my parents never did that because they have 11 children, like they're not gonna do that. So I don't have that to fall back on and it gets stressful sometimes. And I have very real like normal adult struggles, which I've never experienced before because yeah. I haven't been on my own for that long. Yeah. What and are some of those adult struggles? Yeah, just like paying for things and having to like function even when you're super anxious and you don't want to like leave the house or for me, like making videos, like I have to make videos even when I don't feel good. And the thing with a creative job is like everybody wants it and it's great and I'm very lucky to have it. But at the same time, if you're doing bad, you still have to make content and you can't just like, it's not like when you show up to a desk job and you can like feel horrible, but just sit at your desk all day and be fine. Like you have to like be somewhat happy or somewhat alert. You have to think about what you're gonna say. Even when I make videos about my mental health, about being anxious, about being sad, about having a bad day with Emin or whatever, like I still have to think about it. I can't just like, you know, exist like being so down. I have to like bring myself up. And so just dealing with like, facing the world even though you have struggles, I think is something that every adult has to face. And it's something that I'm starting to face right now. Like, okay, even though I have all these problems, like it doesn't matter, the world still goes on. And like, I still have to make money, I still have to exist. Right. So I have to like get up and exist. Well, it's been amazing to see how you normalize that, right? Yeah, so I'm many people to. don't talk about it and their yeah. mental health journey. And in thinking about your journey with anxiety or navigating this moment in your life, what's a time that comes to mind where maybe you were hit really hard with anxiety and how did you pull yourself out of that moment? You know, it's been very intense recently. Like when I lived in Nashville last year, because before I moved to LA, 
I was waking up with anxiety, which I never, never happened to me before. Like I've always experienced anxiety just like in the daytime, wow. <laughs> like normal anxiety, but I was like waking up with it. And, and what I does was, that feel like? It was, it was so weird. Like I was like, I would go to sleep very anxious. Like I feel it in my stomach and my thoughts were running. And then I would dream and I would feel anxiety somehow. Like I was half awake, like I was so, too alert to sleep all night long. And then I would wake up with the same feeling. And it wasn't like you got rest. It was like you were just on high alert all night long, which is like really crazy. Wow. So like I've just had to, I mean, I started going to therapy, but awesome. it's hard to do it consistently. And like it's expensive and it's a lot of effort, you know, mm -hmm. um, but that helped a lot. But then also it's just, like I said, just kind of continuing on somehow. Yeah. And also trying to have as many things as you can outside of it, like outside of your work, outside of your stressors that will calm you down. Like I started taking candlelit baths, which is like my favorite thing in the world. So nice. Or just like turning the lights way down in the bathroom to like take a shower and like trying to purposely spend time with my husband or like trying to do you know, yoga or go outside or whatever. Like. I think it's just about coping because it doesn't really go away, unfortunately. Like you can go to therapy and it can get better and whatever, but you know, issues always come back and there's always gonna be something. So you can either just like, you know, fall to the floor and be like, eh, everything's bad, or you can just like move on. And a big thing that my dad taught me growing up was like, the more you think about other people, the less you have time to think about your own problems. Mm -hmm. And so I've just tried to like push all of my anxieties onto, you know, helping other people or talking to people or, you know, spending time with somebody else or something like anything to just not think about what is going on inside of me, because to a certain degree it helps, but also it can harm you when you think too much about it. Yeah. And so. I love what you said about making sure that you keep things for you, right? Yeah. Having things outside of work or yeah. things that consume you. And I think it's interesting hearing you say that also as a public figure, right? Because you're documenting so much of your life, you're constantly making videos. Yeah. How do you keep those things for yourself and those moments? You know, obviously outside of taking baths and having, <laughs> you know, quality time with your husband, like how do you separate the things that are for you versus what you give the world? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of hard and it's hard to know the line because I talk about very, very personal stuff on my channel. So it's hard to, and sometimes I post stuff that I'm like, mm, like I'll make the video unlisted or I'll edit it out of the video after it's up. Like, like maybe that was a little too personal and I probably shouldn't have talked about that. But I've been thinking about this a lot actually. I saw a content creator make a video and they were like, what it's really like to be a content creator for a living. And they were like, it's awesome, it's great, I'm really lucky, but you trade in a nine to five for like a 24 seven. So I am always thinking about it and I am like, it's not like Saturdays and Sundays, I like go home and stop working. Like I'm always, always thinking about it or I'm completely avoiding it. I'm either completely consumed with it. Like I have to make a video, I have to edit, I have to post, like I have to figure this out. Can I post three videos a week? Or I'm like, I'm not thinking about anything and I just like watch a movie or something, but then I'm like procrastinating. So I actually haven't even really found the balance. Like it's really, really hard to find the balance because you don't have a schedule and you don't have a boss and you don't have someone to tell you go home and like the hours don't end necessarily. Yeah. So you have this, and I think a lot of creators relate to this. You have this very unhealthy balance where either you're going and going and going or you're just not doing anything because you're overwhelmed. It's a hard balance. Mm -hmm. Do you ever feel like you owe your listeners or your viewers pieces of yourself? Honestly, no. Which is so funny because everybody says that they do. And I, I don't know if it's because I've been doing it since I was a kid. So I'm just, I've, since I was like essentially can remember like nine years old, like I've known like what the boundary is and like what not to say on the internet for the most part and like what part of my life is my life. Cause I've dealt with some really scary experiences with like fans and like people coming to my house and all this stuff like when I was a kid. So I think I learned really quickly like what the boundary is and that even as a YouTuber, even as a whatever, like you still are a person. So I don't actually feel like that at all. I more just feel like I have to put it out because it's my job and I like it and I have to keep the schedule going. But like, I think what I put out people, it's definitely enough, <laughs> it's yeah. more than enough. <laughs> no, and that's what I admire so much about you. The fact that you are creating content that is showing people parts of your life that opens up these difficult conversations that hopefully people confront on their own. Yeah. And you're pretty open. I mean, I feel like I watched a video once where you were, you know, talking about like your audience's most spicy questions and opening up about even like periods and oh, things yeah. that women go through and sex and taboo yeah. topics that a lot of people avoid. I love talking about that. Which I love about you. Are there any topics that you feel are too hard for you to create content about? It's hard for me to create content about regular stuff. 
Like Emma Chamberlain, she's one of the greatest YouTubers ever. I love her. And she just talks about normal stuff. And she sits in her house and she makes a PB and J and she just talks about regular stuff. And I've tried to do that and it doesn't work for me. Like I can't talk about nothing. Like it's like, I think it's a skill. I think it's a real skill to just talk about nothing. That's hard as hell. And so to have like a theme, to have a topic, to have something is a lot easier for me. And I, like I said, I've been doing this for so long. I think I've just learned how to talk about stuff. And so I don't think anything is really too intense for me to talk about because I can just find a way to talk about it. Well, I would argue that it's actually better that way. Like, I think it's amazing that you always want to talk about things yeah. that matter. W what are some of the issues or the topics that matter most to you and resonate most with you now? I think the biggest thing that I care about as an overarching theme is people just being able to think for themselves and also to be a good person and that's it like just have your beliefs be nice to people and like that's all i care about like i share my own perspectives but i try to keep it from like a, this is what i think this is what i believe you don't have to believe this you don't have to think this but i'm just telling you what i think um to a certain degree but i think that if i can just encourage my listeners and my followers to just exist as an individual person and not be influenced by other people too much or to you know be a jerk to other people like if i can just do that and just create people who watch my videos and are like hmm, yeah i just need to like be myself and feel confident in myself and be nice to people and like have strong beliefs but like have my own beliefs that's kind of what i care about most like there's that. a lot of topics I could, like tons of topics that i care about but i care most about sharing my own opinion so that i can encourage others to do the same it's amazing and i think that ties your journey together so well encouraging the people who watch your content to think for themselves yeah. because i'm sure growing up it was hard to feel like you could make your own decisions because your your life path was almost you know thrust upon you yeah. how do you feel like that's reconciled who you are today and making these decisions for yourself well i think it just helped me be a more well-rounded person because you have completely opposite experiences. It's like when a kid grows up with controlling parents and then they have crazy life after that. It's like they have two opposite ends of the spectrum and generally they can come to a middle ground. And so I kind of feel like that, like not like crazy controlling, but I just feel like I had this very, very different experience of being a part of a group and being homeschooled and like being in the Catholic thing and my siblings, like very similar, you know, but we were teenagers and we were kids and as you become adults like they have their own beliefs and i have my own beliefs and and i mean they like individually not even as a group anymore like it's cool to see and so i'm just starting to expand on my own journey just as my siblings are just as every, everybody is as a 21 year old and so i think it helped me a lot having that opposite experience as a kid because now i know like what it's like to have you know less individuality and then to have complete individuality and then to find a nice middle ground right you know and the freedom that comes with that being able to choose For your sure. life path your career it's so great yeah oh my gosh awesome. and i feel like throughout your journey you've been confronted with so many difficult conversations right whether it be leaving the group whether it be confronting your relationship publicly your mental health is there a specific conversation that comes to mind for you that you feel was like a turning point or a pivotal moment in, in your journey? Honestly, recently, I started making like a different type of video where I do like a voiceover and it's like a day in my life, kind of like a vlog, but I'm not talking while I do it. It's a voiceover. And so I'm doing like a journal entry and I was inspired by this girl. This is kind of long winded, but I'll come around to it. I was inspired by this girl I saw a couple years ago and she makes videos about her eating and she talks about her struggle with like binge eating and she just documents her eating and it's subtitled. There's no like talking because she wanted to be very private and she just shows what she's eating. And my husband and I ended up watching like 10 of her videos because we were like, oh my God, this is so fascinating. And she's not even talking. This is just so raw and real. And I thought about it for like two years after that. I was like, I want to make a video that is like a journal entry, but like a video journal entry. And I thought it would be so interesting, but I, ha I didn't do it for a long time. And when I finally did it, it felt like I could talk so much more freely about anything. And even though I had been honest before, it was always like, okay, I'm sitting in this location and I talk about something. I'm sitting in this location and I talk about something. I'm doing a, a Q and A, whatever. And it was just so like, I could scratch the surface sometimes, but it just wasn't, 
like fulfilling me as much. And I had a lot, a lot, a lot of struggles with my YouTube career where I was just like, I don't know what I want to do. I don't know what types of videos I even like. Like, I'm just doing this because it works for me right now, but like, I don't know what I want to do long term. And my husband was like, Danny, are you sure you want to do YouTube? Are you sure? And the end of last year, literally the end of last year, I was like, oh my God, I love this. Like this new style of video, this way of talking that's so like actually honest and real and unstructured, it like really, really, made it easier for me to be like a content creator. And I think I found my thing. Wow. And that's helping me like grow as a person because I'm able to just talk about stuff and have these amazing discussions with my followers that I wouldn't have been able to do before because of the structure that I was doing. Wow. And if you were writing a journal entry right here <laughs> on this couch and yeah. maybe revisiting some of the most pivotal moments in your life that made you who you are today, what would be some of the things you would say in that journal entry? I think just the year of, 2019 and 2020 like that was where my life took a complete turn and everything every single thing was taken away from me like by myself like I took everything away from myself almost I changed everything and it felt like I was just alone at times and even though I had my husband I still felt alone because I'm just am that way I just don't never necessarily feel connected to people all the time and it made my faith stronger because I only had God left and I would just cry and listen to worship music and pray like, God, please, like, I don't know what the hell is going on, but can you please help me figure this out? Because it was like, everything was just getting stripped away. Like, I'm not in the band anymore. I'm leaving this church. I'm getting married. Like, I'm moving. Like, all this insane stuff that people never experience or experience in like a 10 year span was all happening at once. And so to have everything like stripped away and just to look at your life and be like, okay, there's nothing left. I have a completely blank slate. Like, what am I going to do with it? That was like a huge, huge, huge pivotal time. It wasn't even a moment. It was just a long time of just rebuilding after that. And what was it like with that blank slate? Did you feel a lot of pressure to prove people wrong, to go build a huge successful career? Like, how did you reconcile that new, you know, starting over moment? Oh, yeah, it was super scary because, like I said, I came from a very privileged family. And so, like, I'm not going to, you know go out on my own and then fail and like not make any money or have to, you know, live somewhere that's not nice or whatever. Like I put the, that pressure on myself because of what I thought my family would think of me, which wouldn't even be right. They would never judge me for that. But I just had all these preconceived notions about what people would think of me, whether it was my family or my friends or my, my old Cimarelli followers or whatever. And so there was definitely so much pressure to like go out, do your YouTube channel and succeed. And like at first it succeeded. At first it did really well because everybody wanted to know about the drama. But after it kind of chilled out and in 2020, 2021 ish, it got like the views were kind of going down and people weren't paying attention as much. It was like, uh oh, like I have to really figure this out for myself. And that's kind of what this overarching journey is. Like I started out with people watching because of the drama, but now I have to like actually build a career for myself and do this like slow growth thing that I should have done before, but like I had this drama, so it like didn't work out. You know what I'm saying? Do you feel fulfilled now? Like, yeah. Do you feel like you are headed in the right direction? I yeah. think I remember you saying you wanted to go into design. Do you still have, you know, other careers that you want to explore? Or do you just feel fulfilled right here in this moment, taking it day by day? Yeah, I think I just felt pressured to figure it all out and to be super successful right off the bat. And then when I kind of experienced the like embarrassment of like me not getting as many views as I wanted to get or whatever, then I was like, OK, I'm just going to focus on myself and build this up. And when you have that satisfaction of building something from very little, rather than starting with a band with 5 million subscribers, like I had to, you know, get a very little amount of views on my videos and start to build them up. And they're still growing. Like I have so much work to do and so much further to go, which I'm really excited about, but it's actually starting to grow now for real. And I'm really excited about it because I do feel fulfilled. Like I do feel like the videos that I'm making are what I'm supposed to be making. And like, I might do different career paths in my lifetime. Like I really want to be a teacher at some point. Like I've always wanted to be a nurse. Like I have so many different things I want to yeah. do, but those are like so far in the future. And right now with what I'm doing, I think it works really well and I'm really happy with it. And there's something so gratifying about doing it yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Like now having this blank slate, taking your life into your own hands, building a career for yourself. Yeah. It's awesome that you've been able to just really like take the reins back in your own yeah. life. Well, it makes you appreciate it more because like when I was in Cimarelli, I was part of a team. And so, and I wasn't even the leader of the team. Like I was helping with what I could and I was doing what I could. 
But when you do everything yourself with a little bit of help, you know, from my husband or maybe my friends or whatever, when you do everything yourself, it makes you appreciate something a lot more because you're like, I built this. I worked hard on this. It wasn't just like I walked into something, you know, that was already successful, which is what happened when I was a kid. Like I didn't build up some rally. It just kind of blew up and then I joined. And so to have, you know, 130,000 subscribers now, which is so cool to build that up by myself is so cool and even if it's way less than you know five million or whatever six million it's still so awesome for me and every single comment like i read my comments every single day and like i love everybody who follows me because it's this amazing thing of like they're part of my life journey and they know so much about me and i don't have a lot of friends i don't talk to a lot of people so to have these like followers who watch me who i actually connect with it's like a really really cool way of talking to people it's amazing and so yeah, it's just, it's felt so satisfying. And even myself as someone who's watched your content, I remember you taught me a long time ago about the importance of knowing who your real friends are. Mm -hmm. Like what if you stop texting someone and see if they reach out to you to make right. plans? Right. Like it's, it's awesome probably being on your side and your perspective, seeing how you are having a positive impact on so many people. Yeah. And a lot of what you do involves using your voice mm -hmm. and using your platform. Mm -hmm. Do you ever feel pressure to speak out for you know, a specific social justice related cause or take political stances because of your platform? Yeah, I mean, people will straight up DM you and be like, why aren't you talking about this? <laughs> and I talk about a lot of things. Like I talk about very important things. You talk things. about all the I try things. to share all the things on my Instagram story. Like I am not afraid at all to talk about anything that I'm passionate about. Um, and so if I miss something, like sometimes something will happen and I won't post about it because I don't know about it. And people do get mad at you, which like you kind of have to ignore sometimes because yeah. they're half right. Like you should speak out about things for sure. But also if you don't see something like they don't know why you didn't speak about it. Like right. that's the issue is people don't always know why someone isn't talking about something. They could not know about it. It's not like they're deliberately ignoring it. Um, and if they choose to, like, they're a person, they're not like a robot. Like if they don't want to talk about something, they don't have to. Of course. But I also feel like all content creators have a responsibility to talk about things, you know? Just use your voice. Just say it. But I don't think you should use your voice in a negative manner. I just think that people should be confident in what they're going to say. And if they're not confident about it, maybe they should reevaluate those beliefs. Like if you're scared to speak out on something because you think that the entirety of social media will, you know, come back at you maybe you should think about why you have those beliefs. And like, if you're a creator in social media, maybe you shouldn't be a creator in social media because like, that doesn't really work out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And is that how you found your voice? Like, as we've gone through the journey of your life, some of the most pivotal, most difficult moments, yeah. there are so many young people out there who are ready and excited to use their voice, speak out, make a difference, but don't really know where to start. So where you are now here in 2022, what would you tell your younger self about getting started? Is there anything you know now that you wish you knew then? I think my younger self probably would just like to know that everything's going to be fine and i think that's a big lesson that i've learned in my life is that even when things are really hard and everything falls apart like everything's taken away from you and everything changes eventually it works out and you might not know how it's going to work out but if you just stay confident in yourself and you find something that you can be confident in like if you're not confident in it try something else you know um if you stick with it and like try your hardest, like eventually it will work. Like it will work out. The only way it doesn't work out is if you die, then it doesn't work out because you're dead. But like right. if you're still alive, like it's still working out. It just might not be what you thought it would be. And there might be some changes that you're gonna go through to get to something that you might be more satisfied with. But I think at the end of the day, there's this big, and this is why I'm so passionate about being real on social media, because there's this big thing of like, you know, be perfect or like be perfectly vulnerable or like be like everybody else on social media and share this type of content or this type of thing like there's waves that everybody follows um but i think that people feel bad about themselves when they see a lot of creators and they just feel down like why is my life not worked out why have i not gotten the career that i really want why can i not be as whatever as this person that i'm looking at um, and people neglect to remember that it's their own path. Like everybody has such a different path. And 
the people who are popular in social media don't even have the path that most people would have. So I think it sucks that people are looking up to people who don't have any sort of relatability whatsoever because it's like you're rich and you're famous and you're perfect and I'm not that. And I don't feel like that at all. Like I'm not rich, I'm not famous, I'm not perfect. And so I just didn't want to be a role model who was making people feel bad about themselves. So yeah, I guess I would just try to tell my younger self and just younger people in general, that life works out, it just might not be what you think it is. And the way that someone else's life looks probably won't be how your life looks and that's okay. Like that that's is, more than okay, it's that good. That is so powerful. And if you could guess, where do you see your life going next? Do you see yourself ever going back to Cimarelli? Maybe starting a new music career with your husband, starting a new career, like where, where do you see yourself going now in the future? I don't know, because like I said, I have so many things I wanna do, you know? So I don't see myself going back to music. Someone even asked me that the other day. They're like, would you do a music career again? I was like, I don't think so. Like I help my husband write his music and I record harmonies on his songs. And that's like more than enough to like scratch the itch for right. me. Like, so no more Cimarelli? I don't think so. I mean, I don't know, who knows? Anything can happen, I don't know. But I just don't see myself doing music again. You know, like it's just not my thing necessarily. I'll just stick to singing around my house and posting Instagram videos occasionally, but I think I just see myself trying to survive and be happy and growing and just putting it on the internet for as long as I can. And that medium might change. Maybe I'll do a podcast in the future. Maybe I'll change my YouTube channel up. Like, honestly, it probably will change because I'm an ever-changing person. But I think I'm just sticking with this for now. And then in the future, there's going to be a lot of different things that happen, I'm sure. But I've, I've stopped trying to live so much in the future because I found myself doing it way too much before where I'm like, one day I'll do this, one day I'll do that. And then I never thought about where I was at today. And so I'm just doing what I'm doing right now and I'm sure it's gonna change. So but. Danny, something very special we do here on POVs is we bring in perspectives from Gen Zers out in our community and in the world. So keep an eye on your phone. We're gonna send some texts to you. I want your raw and honest unfiltered answers and you'll just respond to the POVs. Okay. Sound good? Got it. Let's do it. Religion is like a cult. There are so many made up rules that don't make any sense. Sometimes people can't even drink caffeine or watch TV. I just don't get it and I don't think we need religion in 2022. Ooh. I think religion can be very helpful to some people and very harmful to other people. So I think it's just about uh, a more open perspective on religion and people just being able to examine it from an objective perspective on whether they like it and whether it helps them or not. And if it doesn't help them, I think it should be more okay to just not deal with it. For sure. Did yeah. you ever feel like you were in a cult you know, <laughs> in, in your own religion? I mean, not really, luckily, yeah. but definitely looking back, I'm like, mm. Don't Good. love all that. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I hear a lot of people say in 2022, you know, we have other communities, we have different groups, even the creators that you subscribe to on YouTube can be like your own kind religion. Of culty, yeah. um, do you still feel like we need traditional religious institutions in 2022? I mean, yeah, I think some people do. I think whatever works for people and whatever makes people genuinely happy, but I think when it becomes negative and when people get taken advantage of and all the bad stuff happens, like that's not okay. But, and I personally don't like it very much for myself, but again, it helps some people, so. And one more hot take for you. Yeah. A lot of times people in their own religions can feel like their religion is the only way mm -hmm. of life. And I know you were talking about Catholicism and growing up, you were taught that that was the only way to live. Yeah. Do you feel like there is one religion that is more correct than another religion? Absolutely not. I don't think so. I think I actually have an interesting perspective where I think that all the religions are just meant to make people feel connected to whoever they think their creator is or whatever. And I just think that everybody can be right at the same time. Like, I think that it's more just about being a kind person because most of the religions, as far as I know, I think all of them, they end with the same kind of core beliefs, like to love other people, to be a kind person, to take care of each other, like without all the very specific things, like that's what it boils down to a lot. So I think that it all just kind of has the same goal and I think that it can all coexist just fine. People who save themselves for marriage, oh, so intense, haven't even experienced a real relationship. Intimacy plays such an important role in figuring out who you're supposed to be with. Spicy. I don't agree with that. I think that some people who wait till marriage have really, really awesome relationships and experiences. And I think that intimacy can be important, you know, for sure. And it can change the course of your relationship. I don't think that it's integral to know whether you want to be with someone forever. So I don't, I don't agree with that. I think that you can definitely experience a real relationship if you wait till marriage. I, I hear sure. you. Did, did you save yourself for marriage? Oh no, I didn't. <laughs> like, 
I still experienced a great relationship. So I think both ways it can go. And did you ever feel pressure to save yourself from marriage because of your religion? Yeah, I mean, that's definitely a big belief that it's like a sin and you have to do it or you're going to go to hell or something. So, and I got a lot of the talks in youth group and all kinds of stuff. But I felt like I was free to make that choice when I started to change my beliefs on religion. Got it. And when I did, I was like, okay, this really isn't like the devil that people make it out to be. Like, it's really not that big of a deal. Again, like, I think that some people can do it and it can be great. Other people, it can end up badly. And I've heard people who wait till marriage and then they're like, oh my God, this is too much. This is all happening all at once. And I didn't even realize this would happen. And they don't even like the person that they're with anymore. And like, it can be an issue. But I think that both ways it can go really good or really bad. For sure. Both ways. For sure. People who get married young will probably get divorced before they're 30. Definitely agree with that. <laughs> really? <laughs> I was going to say. She said I would get divorced. <laughs> um, no, I just think people need to not have such one way perspectives on things. Like, yeah, statistically, actually, a lot of people who get married young will get divorced. But also, a lot of people who get married young don't have a great foundation. They don't necessarily understand what marriage is like. And <clears throat> they don't have that commitment to their partner that they would if they were 30, which I totally get. And that makes sense. And it makes sense why people break up because they're 20 and they're like, oh, we should just get married. Or they get pregnant and they're like, ah, we have to get married. And so I can see why people end up divorced. But I think if you go into it like I did with the right mindset, like it's going to be hard. I just feel like people think that if you get married older, you're never going to change again. Like you're never going to grow. You're never going to go through bad times. Like if you get married when you're 26 or 30, then like suddenly you won't go through changes. But like you definitely change from when you're 30 to 40 to 50 and so on. And like everybody saw their parents go through struggles. And so I think it's just about being committed. I think that's really what it is. Like you either choose to do it or you don't, you know? Yeah, I hear you. I hope Danny starts a new band with Evan. <laughs> I don't think I would ever do that ever not because of anything like with Edmund but because I don't want to be in a band <laughs> do you think it would be controversial if you started a new band or joined it a probably band? would it probably would how do you think your imagine sisters if would I, feel imagine if I joined a girl group oh my god my I mean, sisters would probably be really sad I would be sad <laughs> wow you know if you left the group and then joined another group I'd be pretty sad so there isn't a, a band in your future no I'd say there's definitely not a band in my but future but maybe some singing <laughs> maybe some singing maybe mm. drop a hot take Ugh. Do it. I think people think way too much that there's just one way to think about things. And I think it's cool that you guys do this on the show and talk about different perspectives and everything because I think it's very important. I think that there's too much of a one-sided belief in a lot of ways in the world. And I think that people need to be more open to others' perspectives while still holding their own strong beliefs. I think that it's good to have really firm beliefs but also acknowledge that you could be wrong and that the different beliefs that exist throughout the universe are what make things good. And I think if there was just one way to think about things and one way to see things and one way that was right or wrong, then the world wouldn't be what it is and that's a good thing. Danny, you, know? you read my mind. <laughs> I'm so happy you were here. You were a true conversationalist. Thank you. Thank you so much for being on POVs. Thank you. Thank you.